man, I am feeling good today about teaching you guys. You know why? Because I know if I do a good job of explaining Pythagorean theorem, you guys will breeze right through this. So let's take our time and understand what Pythagorean theorem is. Whenever we're talking about a right triangle, how do I know it's a right triangle? Because there's a right angle in there, which is 90 degrees. I know that they're going to be two short legs. We're going to call them leg A and leg B. And we're always going to have something called the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always going to be directly across from our 90 degree angle. And that's always going to be our longest side. So we have our two shorter sides, which are A and B. And then we're going to have our C, which is our hypotenuse. Always remember, C, opposite of the 90 degree angle. It doesn't matter whether you put A here and B here. You can put B there and A here. Just remember, A and B are always your shortest legs. Okay, so what is the whole point of Pythagorean theorem? It allows us to be able to solve for A, B, or C, or any missing side when we know there's a right angle. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and introduce you guys into the actual formula. Now that we understand Pythagorean theorem, we've got to remember our formula. Our formula is always going to be A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Okay, so what does that mean? That means if we square one of our legs and we add it to our other leg squared, it's always going to equal our hypotenuse squared. Remember, the hypotenuse is always opposite of our 90 degree angle. And we can only use Pythagorean theorem when we have a right triangle. Okay, so let's actually put this into use now. Let's go ahead and say that our A is going to equal 3 inches and our B is going to equal 4 inches. And we do not know what our C is. So let's go ahead and solve for C. Okay, use your formula and substitute values in. So let's start with our A. We know that A is 3, so therefore we're going to square 3. Now remember we're talking about inches. So at the end of our answer, we've got to remember to put our answer in inches. So we go ahead and say 3 squared plus b squared, which is 4 inches. So 4 squared, and all that equals c squared. Okay, let's go ahead and do our squares now. 3 squared is 3 times 3, which should equal 9. 4 squared should give us 16, and we still don't know what c squared is. Go ahead and do 9 plus 16, and that should give you 25, still equals c squared. Now, this is where we're learning a new concept. We've got to go back and remember that in solving for equation or variables, we actually try to isolate our variable. We've got to get c by itself. So the only thing with c right now is that squared. How do we get rid of it? We do the opposite, and the opposite of squaring something is taking the square root. So if you take the square root of c squared, you're actually canceling that out and you're leaving only C. And do not forget that whatever you do to one side, you always got to do to the other. So you take the square root of 25. Now take some time and watch the video on square roots and you will realize that the square root of 25 is actually 5. And now, like I said earlier, you got to remember to bring back your units. Okay, so we're talking about inches. Therefore, our C in this example is 5 inches. If we have a right triangle that has a leg of 3 and another leg with 4, our C will always be 5. 